Recording in progress. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well. I'm trying to switch this over to my computer instead of my phone, but um, let me just try this really quickly. That'll be way more fun for me. Um, join. Do you know what the code is to your login? Um, I need to find out. You shouldn't need one. Meeting settings. Nope. Mm. Here, I'll just use this number that was on the invitation. It's 879. Four. Did you? Okay. 879-433. Six five two two two. Yes. Okay. I'm going to shop this one. All right, hello. Oh, now I can't hear you. What's going on? Let's see. I cannot hear you. You can't hear us? Oh, there we go. We're good. Okay, sounds good. How are you? I'm well, how are you guys doing? Good, doing well. Hey. Good, good. What have you guys been doing? Tell her a little bit about what you've been doing. Talk loud. Cooking. 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 Yeah. What else have we talked about? Like, what's the more in-depth stuff we've been doing? Oh, talk about like uh, uh, hacks and signing on and stuff, and our plans for that, and then just things we could fix. We've done a lot. Eh? Shy. I guess. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. Awesome. What yeah. did you cook? Um, egg bites, protein balls, and parfaits. You know, okay. parfaits. Did yeah, you already I, get to eat them, or do you have to wait to eat them? We ate okay. them all. They were really good. <laughs> um, Very cool. I have a lady, Bailey Cooper, from Rural Health Education, and uh, I do a lot of my diet. She's a dietitian and stuff, and so uh, she came on and talked about, like, the importance of what we eat and how it can help anxiety, like before you compete and stuff like that. So it was really good. She did a good job. Very nice. Yeah. So you guys are the the first like inaugural leadership team for rodeokids.com, right? Yes. Yeah. How do you feel about that responsibility? Excited. Yeah, I'm really excited. Cool. Um, what'd you say? I said it's an honor. It's an honor. Wow, that's a nice thing to say. Um, one of the things I wanted to understand, since this is a new concept for me, is the why. I think it's always really important to start with why, and I have a feeling Cammy's been talking about the mission and the purpose and some of the reasons why you guys are coming together to be a team who drives a lot of really good change. So why why do you, why do you exist? Why do you, why is this organization important? You guys all know the answer to this question. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working on that all morning. What do you have questions? Share it with her. What's our why? To serve God. It's always a good place to start. What would you like God's help to do? What do you want to change about rodeo for kids? What was I talking about? Helping the mental side of things. Okay, that's cool. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, how parents should act. Okay. Mm -hmm just experiences they've had with parents and how some parents might not be aware how their kids feel and kind of trying to shed some light on that to be helpful to parents. 
Okay, that's good. Uh, drills to help kids. What are we? We're a oh, team. A team. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I love teams. And uh, it's probably my favorite part of my life, I think, has been all the good fun that I've had over the years working with very interesting teams. And I don't know if Cammie told you, but I've spent the last five years of my life working with a team in the Netherlands um, who want to create a world without waste. And so it's a whole bunch of people who have come together to take big bulky things like carpets and mattresses and furniture and redesign them in a way that all of the materials can be recovered and reused or recycled or refurbished when you're done. And so just as an example of the carpet that you're standing on, um, 11 billion pounds of carpet goes into landfill or incineration every year. And um, only less than 3% of carpet is recycled, even though lots of carpet is made from recycled water bottles. None of it gets recycled in the end. So all of the stuff that we buy and make and consume is going to trash. And so we have a why to create a world without waste. And we live to protect the value of materials. And so it becomes really personal to us. Like in our hearts, we lose sleep at night over the, the way it is now, the status quo. We It drives us bonkers when we put stuff in the trash because someday we're gonna be out of materials and we're gonna, your, your kids someday are probably gonna have to go into the landfills to find materials because we're not gonna have oil and rocks and materials from the ground anymore. We'll use them all up and then we're gonna have to go back to the trash to find the materials for your kids. And so that's just an example of a why, like we all get really excited about driving this change in the world. And so I liked hearing that you guys are coming together as a leaders in the community that you're in to drive positive change. and improving the conversation with parents that's awesome that'll that'll be a good thing for the world when you're done not just for rodeo what other things would you like to do to have an impact while you get the chance to shape it what are things you guys wrote down this morning when you talked about your individual whys and like how does that relate to the grand scheme I have pages about this. <laughs> okay. Can you ask the question one more time? Yeah, the question is, you know, you, when you start with why, you kind of have a clear mission. You guys know that you want to have a positive impact on the rodeo community um, for your families, for yourselves, for all the other people that love doing what you do. And what are some of the changes that you want to deliver to make it better for yourselves, for your friends, for the community, for the world? What are some of the things that you really want to accomplish together to make it better so that your leadership leaves a mark? Inspire people. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Cool about providing a place for people to go. Mm -hmm. Put on clinics. Tell them about nice. it. I just want to help out. Take the positives out of the negatives. Cool. Pretty safe. Sounds space. like you guys have been having some good discussions. Yeah. Creating a safe space for a community for kids outside of the arena not just inside. One of the things that, Claire, I think, what did you say about the mental side of things before? Um, It's not, just like it's not talked about, kind of. You know, everyone, obviously everyone struggles with it, and they, you can feel guilty about it or whatever, but like I said, radio kids kind of brings a life to it. So it helped me a lot, just knowing that other people struggle with it, and it helped me get through, like, my radio mental block. Awesome. 
Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, go ahead. Uh, we want to make rodeo more welcoming. Oh, we want to make rodeo more welcoming. I don't feel like it's welcoming enough for newer people. What does that mean? Jeff, you got it. It's like opening it up, uh, helping the newer people, giving advice, and not just turning away from them and not offering anything. Okay, that's cool. Have you guys um have you guys set any any measurable goals? Like one of one of the things that um one of the things that we try to do is to um set wildly important goals. And so we call them wigs, wildly important goals. And so we, when we have something we want to do that is a, like a focus area, we'll say, when will we feel good about the progress that we made? Like, how will we know that we've hit a milestone or delivered something? Like, what is the, if you start with the end in mind, what does success look like? Do you, do you guys have, have you guys talked at all about any goals that you want to hold yourselves accountable for that are proof that you delivered something like in that in that particular topic where you want to be more welcoming if you want to be more welcoming to a certain group of people how would you know that you were more welcoming we haven't quite set measurables to it we've still we, we've been in the brainstorming process as to different ways that we can well okay i do want to say just one thing about how you said how success looks how success looks in the end but I don't feel like people should look, stop focusing on the end goal and just more worry about the journey and the end will come to the yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're both important. And the, my only response to that is um it's not really about the competition part of getting somewhere and knowing that you're done. It's really about having you have to have a dream to have a dream come true. And the more that that dream is it has some details to it. It has some specific things about it. It's easier to get other people to share the same destination than just to go on a journey. And so sometimes when it comes to having some alignment as leaders that you're say, we're, let's just say that in the, in the area of being more welcoming, you wanted to try to welcome um, five new people who had maybe never been involved with rodeo before, but you knew they liked horses or they're a good friend or something. Let's just say you had a goal to bring, make sure that there are always five new people at everything you do, just as an example. Well, you can have a lot of fun on the journey for how you figure out how to find those people and how to learn about them and how to engage them and how to tell stories to them and how to welcome them. And then you either bring three people or five people or 30 people in the end, and then you learn, oh, we thought we could get five, we actually got 25, or we thought we could get five and we didn't get any. Then you just get to sort of reflect and say, what happened? What was good? What was what could have been better? It's, it's never really about success or failure as much as it's about having a dream and then sharing a vision of what it looks like to realize the dream. And then knowing along the way that you get to have a dialogue about how it's going. That's just the idea that I would share with you. Does that fit, Cami, with some of the things you guys have been talking about or what you would like to do? What are you guys saying? Does that align with the direction we're headed? Does that create some cl some clarity around the conversations we've been having and where we're headed after this conversation? Yeah. We've all we've been adding everything up to get to the point that you're making right now. So I'm, I love how you introduced it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, something else that I had a question for you guys around was, um, you guys all are all, where are all of you from? Sorry, Oklahoma, Florida, Oklahoma. Missouri, but Northwest Iowa. I That's didn't it. hear. So I I heard Oklahoma, I heard Northwest Iowa, and I and then I I couldn't hear everybody. So, um, Florida, 
Florida, awesome. Michigan. Michigan. Missouri. Missouri, yeah, you guys are from all over, so this is cool. Um, I love diverse teams, and I love that there's women and men here. Um, so very cool that you guys have a, a lot of different perspectives, and you will have different perspectives. Um, if you guys are a really high performance team and you're all really strong individuals with really, really big ideas, you're bound to have days where you weren't heard or you disagree or you think somebody's crazy or somebody pushes your buttons. What kinds of things are you guys going to do when you don't see eye to eye to make sure that you support everyone in getting back to high trust and back to having your hands on each other's backs. How do you guys handle those kind of things in your life when you'd think somebody's nuts or you think that, or they just piss you off once in a while? Like, what do you do to make sure that this team are people who get to be yourselves? And if you're always yourselves, you're going to have days where you're angry or you're going to have days you don't disagree or you're going to have days when somebody didn't hear you. How are you guys going to support each other in making sure that you find ways to talk it out and restore trust. Comes to mind. Well, something happened. I just got to pray about it. Let's start working together. Pray about it and start working together again. What else? I'm just trying to walk away for a second. Is that going to solve any problems? No. Okay. Oh, well, I do, um, like, just pray about it. And instead of, like, <clears throat> just give it to God. Give it all to God. And then by the next day, it will be, tonight I'll be okay. It will be feeling different. Be feeling better, but she's talking about like when your feelings are really hurt, like in, or if you're just frustrated, or maybe somebody has repeatedly done something, or like you're you're clashing with the team. I mean, we're we're not together through just this weekend. Like we have a whole nother rest of the year to get through. And she's right. Sometimes you won't feel heard um, on something or seen on something in a certain so message. So how are we going to handle that as a team how are we going to handle that as individuals what are things that we can put into place that we are opening it up to have that discussion is that along the right track kelly yeah yeah so i mean there's going to be a time when someone just gets busy and they fall behind and you have to call them forward and there's going to be times when you said something and then other one people talk over you they don't agree but they don't tell you like there's just going to be stuff that's going to go wrong if you're if you're you know if you're all really strong you have ideas that aren't always going to be a fit with other people's ideas and that's perfectly fine but what happens to way too many teams that I've been on is people get their feelings hurt and then there's this crazy thing that you might recognize called drama and there's this, you, maybe you guys have lived somewhere in your lives already in the dreaded drama triangle where there's a bully and there's a victim and there's a rescuer and somebody makes you mad. And then you, you can probably play any one of these roles. I've been all of them at some time in my life. But if you're the, if you're the perpetrator, you're driving your opinion and not listening to other people. And then if you're a victim, you're hurt by it. And instead of working it out with that person, you phone a friend and you say, oh, that guy's so mean and I can't believe what he said. and I don't like him. And then you kind of have all this drama and drama is never good for a team. It's not good for a friend. It's not good for anything, but there's a better choice to be made. And that's to say people, people have behaviors. Sometimes those behaviors are not a good fit with someone else. It's just, it's just a, a little clash of energy and instead of being a victim, you can be a creator and you can say, you can learn to give some feedback and say, Hey, I really care about you. But yesterday when you said this, it really, it really bothered me. And I would like to talk about it with you because I care about you. And then you can, you know, you can have mechanisms as a team 
One of them is to learn the skills to talk directly to each other. One of them is to have a pause once in a while as a team where you say, how's it going for you guys as a team? Not just how's the work going and how's our progress and are we hitting our goals, but how are you feeling as a member of this team? Do you feel like you're heard? Do you feel included? Are you having fun? Are you glad you're here? Would you rather be somewhere else? Do you, did you make a mistake coming here? And just checking in once in a while to say, is this what you thought it was going to be? Because hopefully it's even better. But it's possible that other things come up in your life or it's possible that it's not what you thought it was or it's possible that it's 10 times harder than you thought it was going to be. And you get to have, it takes courage, but you get to have the opportunity to be the young adults and the leaders that can say, time out. I want to talk about something. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like you guys are creating the foundation where you're going to, you, you could create some mechanisms when you need to say time out? Do you already do that in your life? Does this ring a bell to some of the conversations we had earlier about relationships with those who raise us? Yeah. And this is kind of taking that conversation and applying it, you know, to what we talked about, how sometimes we wish our parents could see how we felt or how what exactly what she's talking about. From It's easy to relate to it there, but can you relate to it in other relationships? And then how can we as a team be an open place to have those conversations. What do you think? Yeah. We've talked about mechanisms to incorporate into that. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the sugar crash from all your baking. <laughs> and this like part of what Kelly's asking is to to start the same conversations that we've been having. Um, you know, and and, and just like this, it's it's kind of uncomfortable, but thinking about that kind of stuff. And um, you know, we've we've talked about a lot of the stuff is kind of all coming together. Um, but now she's just asking you guys to, to just think, like, just share, just brainstorm. There's not a right or wrong answer here. About the parents? Just about the mechanisms to, as a team, like for us as a team, um, you, you can use those same mechanisms in all different areas of your life. Um, but what are some of those mechanisms that we can use to hold each other accountable to, share like if somebody hurts your feelings or if you don't feel like you're heard um it's important to share that information because just like we talked about with your parents the other person might not have any idea that that's what they're doing or that's how they're making you feel remember we talked yesterday about this story that i'm telling myself that kind of stuff like but how do you open the door to have those conversations so that this team stays together and moving forward because not only okay, so we get along fine, everything's great, but we're going to add other people to the team too. So we have to make sure that we have mechanisms to make sure everybody feels like they're part of the team. We just need to talk to each other. We need to talk to each other. Be honest and transparent. I like the word transparent. Very good. What else? Be open minded with each other. Be patient. Our ideas. Be patient. Be yeah, listen to each other. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the blindfolded activity that we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Things like that, where we learn to stop and, like you said, stop and pause. And, like, if somebody does bring something to your attention, to have the conversation to like be open to it like everything you're saying aligns with that and then be willing to listen and then be willing to take responsibility for your part of it too yeah another good thing because everybody has different styles and 
and you know, some people like to speak up and share their ideas and some people like to listen first and some people are more introverted or shy. And I think another way that you guys can really help each other and serve each other is by making sure everybody gets the chance to share their point of view. So like if I said, um, you know, what do you guys want to have for breakfast tomorrow? And you all have to eat the same thing. And you guys had to put yourself through a process of picking what you're going to eat or where you're going to eat. Um, it's just so common that somebody says, I just think, I just think we should go to McDonald's. And then everyone will go, oh, okay. But if you're actually gonna have the best breakfast that you've ever had, you should probably spend a little bit of time saying, what is the best idea each person has for what they think sounds good? And then you can say, oh, that's that sounds good or that's better than what I was thinking. That sounds really cool. Let's do that. And then say, oh, we haven't heard from Florida. Um, you know, what would you what do you love to have for breakfast? If she's someone who doesn't speak up first and care enough about each other to say, hey, I haven't heard from you for a while. Like, what what do you want to do or what do you care about or how are you feeling about that? Because just anytime you get five people in a room, people are especially from different places and different ages and different backgrounds you're going to have five different natures and you can have personal responsibility and accountability for sharing what's in your mind and in your heart, but you can also show a lot of care for each other by making sure that everybody is contributing and everybody's a part of your important conversations. It's like, I call it having your, it's, it's one thing when you, when somebody gives you a hand, if somebody gives you a hand, they're, nice and they help you up or they help you it's a whole different thing when somebody has their hand on your back because when somebody has their hand on your back as a teammate they're really there to say I am here to help you move forward and I'm and I also would love it if you wanted me to keep moving forward too and not just wait till I fall and pick me back up and so I really I really like that when I see people on our teams who are looking out for each other. And when we have, we have a problem sometimes when we have 20 people in a room that there's four people with bigger egos and stronger voices and left to their own devices, those four people will do 90% of the talking and they don't even notice that no one else is talking. But when we actually are intentional about bringing everyone into the conversation and we give those folks who like to speak up a responsibility to make sure they get everyone involved. Before you know it, we make much better decisions and we have much better conversations and it's a heck of a lot more fun for everybody. How do you guys feel like you're doing about that so far? Cause you, it sounds like you guys are having some awesome conversations about some pretty important topics. How are you feeling about your ability to make sure everybody is being heard and that everybody's good ideas are on the table. I feel like we have talked pretty well. Yeah, they've done a, I think we've done a good job of improving everybody. I don't think there's been any mix up or anything. Nice. Hey, the girls feel the same way? Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. And how does it make you feel when you know that the five of you are showing that much care for each other's ideas and that much interest in what people have to say. That there's a few good people left in this world. Huh, awesome. <laughs> That's a pretty good way to feel. <laughs> we did the um, what do I see in you exercise last night. Oh. So we, just, Hard. we just did the positive side of it, but um, share a little bit about what you guys thought about that exercise. What did it show you about what people see in you? People see in you what you don't see in yourself. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, see that... what you probably want people to see in you, yeah. even though you're hiding it sometimes or like you don't feel that way on the inside if you think that people that's what you want people to see usually they still will they see the good in you yeah 
So that was kind of a cool activity that brought them together quite a bit. And I was like, oh, that's what they see in me? It was neat. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, one of the, um, one of the other things I think is, is I'm curious if you guys have talked about knowing your strengths, but also knowing your allergies or like what, what you don't like to do, how you're not, you know, what's kind of not in your nature. And do you guys know, have you guys talked at all a little bit about, you know, when it comes to some of the activities that you guys will plan or the goals that you will set, some people are going to be really good at some of the activities that support it. And some people are going to have other strengths. Um, do you, how are you, if, if you are in a situation where something just isn't interesting to you at all, or that's not an activity that's a good fit for you, how, do you know how to say no? Are you going to be able to say, Ooh, I don't, I, that's just not a, the best fit for me. I would like to contribute in some other way. Do you feel like you're going to be comfortable when, like knowing yourself well enough to know, uh, I would rather do something else. Do you feel comfortable with being able to say, here's how I'm going to help you the most. And here's how my skills are the best fit for this. And here's where I'm either going to need help to try or where it was really going to drain me to have to complete that thing that I have zero interest in. You guys feel comfortable saying no in this setting? If you don't think it's a good idea or it's not something that you want to participate in? Yeah. Uh, no, I always am afraid to say no, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> okay. That's honesty is good. Good. Is there anything that we've talked about that you're like, ooh, I don't know? No. Okay. <laughs> there, I just said no. <laughs> Sometimes I think two of the hardest things are to say no and to ask for help. You know, sometimes as leaders, we just will sign up for things and then they may end up being a little bigger than we thought they were. And it's sometimes hard to say, I need help or could you please help me or, or I, you know, I, I want to reframe this or I need to renegotiate it. But I personally, I don't know why, but I've also always had a hard time. I, I, I like to say, yes, I want to be helpful. I, I want to achieve. I, I want to do what I said I would do. It's pretty easy sometimes to overcommit when you have school and life and sports and maybe a job or whatever else you have going on in your world. And uh, I just really hope that you guys can create a safe space for each other to to raise your hand when something needs attention or or to really check in to make sure, are you sure you want to do all that? Because um when you do say yes, you know, to be personally accountable for doing what you said you would do is pretty big deal. And so also being able to not overcommit is a really hard thing to learn. At least it was for me. It still is, honestly, sometimes. Mm -hmm. You guys relate to that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever feel undercommitted? Yes. That too. Undercommitment. Sometimes we don't stay committed or we don't commit to enough things and we just kind of let things happen without being accountable for it. I think that can happen too. Um, when we were talking about strengths and challenges or, or, or allergies, I do, do you have any do you have any pet peeves or things that have bothered you about other teams you've been on or other groups you've been a part of? Like, for example, like I hate it when people talk over me or, or like for me personally, I love it when things happen with me and I hate it when things happen to me. I like to be involved in decisions and I like to be a part of discussing things. And then when we pick something that I've been a part of discussing, I'm all in. If I was at the table to talk about it and we decide to do it, you can count on me no matter what. But if you come and tell me, oh, I decided this and you have to do it, or I signed you up for something and this is where you need to be next week, I'll be like, what? Like 100 times out of 100, I would rather be 
doing things with somebody than than just being told what to do. And so that's my personal allergy. If you want the best out of me, enroll me in what you want me to do. Ask me to do it. I'm going to say yes as often as possible. But if you delegate to me or if you choose for me or if you tell me what I have to do, sometimes I'm going to be like, I'm not going to tell you what I want to want to say, but I'll be like, no, thank you. Because I do curse sometimes and I don't want to curse in front of you. Anything ringing a bell for pet peeves that you guys have? I agree with you. I do not like being told what to do, like, or that I'm going to do something. Like, I like having the option, and I'm almost same thing. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I'm going to agree to do it with somebody. Like, I'm open to opportunities. I'm open to exploring different things, but there are. If somebody tells me I'm going to do something, I really struggle with that. Unless it's my dad, then usually I do it. <laughs> That's about like in baseball, like I'll if say I like do something wrong, but like just make a mistake. Um, and then like somebody who like isn't like I don't for somebody who's just like not like my level. Who's on my level, you know, above my level, to me, like, and then they try to tell me what to do. I'm like, you're not a coach. I'm like, and that's just, that's just one thing about me. But then I just, I don't say anything to them. I just, all right, I just go on. That's just one of my pet peeves. Okay. You guys have pet peeves? Yeah. Yeah. Not leadership team wise. What about outside of leadership team wise? Oh, I can't handle a lot. What's what? Talking back, chewing with your mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> what else pushes your buttons? My sisters. <laughs> sisters. <laughs> Girls, anything push your buttons? Some people think that just because you're quiet, you are like, I don't know how to word this. Depressed? No. Sad? No. I understand. I, I'm not going to say dumb, but like. Shallow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or disengaged or not interested. It's not true at all. You know, but yeah. When you're more introverted instead of extroverted yourself. Yeah. I'm an extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> Madison, Claire, any pet peeves you guys have? No. <laughs> Hard to put on the spot, huh? <laughs> Being put on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a big pet peeve is when you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> she'll look at me and then she'll like look away like, oh, I hope you didn't just look at me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Miley, you're up. <laughs> but it's working. You're getting out of here. Now you don't do that. You're just like, okay, well, I'll answer. Because you're going to ask me anyways. Well, you usually have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, do you guys, how, how else can I help you? Is there any, do you have any questions for me? I guess you don't really know that much about me or what we do, but I would, I will help you guys and serve you in any way I could to make sure that you guys have a great time as a team and that you're effective together and that you really drive changes that you'll, you'll personally benefit from and be proud of and have a big impact on the world together so i'm excited that you're there and proud of cami for taking things to the next level with all of you and uh i hope that it is both a boatload of fun and really rewarding for each of you well, kelly how do you react when you know that people on your team are each other you're seeing are what when they're when they're getting on each other's nerves when they yeah, they're kind of not working as a team and maybe being negative. 
Um, we, it happens very often in our team because we are doing very hard work that is against the odds and a lot of people want us to fail. And since everybody's working really hard and they're all doing their best, but they have wildly different styles, they tend to cross lines with each other quite frequently. And we've even had two different times where very strong teams work in complete failure mode. People wanted to quit. People wanted to leave. People were starting to be pretty hateful towards each other. And we use a process called a quack, which is kind of a timeout. It's a quick, urgent aligning call, conference call. And uh, when you hear the word quack, it means you're being kind of called forward into a meeting to bring your honest self to be very vulnerable and open about how you're feeling, what's going on, and and to recommit your, oh. or step out. But we bring people together because there's probably been a big misunderstanding. Everybody has been handpicked. Everybody is talented. Everybody is valuable. But high performance people have strong opinions and they're supposed to. You've got reasons to believe what you believe. But when people stop hearing each other and more sadly, when they stop seeing each other, and caring about each other because we're all just one human with 24 hours a day. There's nobody bigger and there's nobody smaller and there's nobody more important. And so sometimes we have to remind people to get off their high horses. No, no offense to the horses. And uh, to realize you aren't really seeing these other people that are just as important as you. And when you slow down a little bit and suspend what you know, you know what you know. You don't have to keep saying it. The question is, do you really understand what the other person knows or feels? Are you showing that you care about them? Are you showing that you understand each other? And pretty much every time that we stop people who are running really hard and they're exhausted and they're tired and they're being assholes, and we say, all right, time out. What's going on? Why is this getting crazy? Why are you upset? What is happening? Pretty much 100% of the time, we get people to realize everybody's contributing to the mess. There's way too much drama. We realign on the goals. We, we show each other we care. And we decide that next week's going to be better than last week. And we give it another try. And it gets better 100% of the time when we stop and we get real. Because it's okay. It's okay that people are are not always happy with each other. The truth is, I know they're well-intentioned. I know they're trying to do their best. I know that they want the same things. They just have dramatically different ways of getting there. And sometimes it's way easier to point a finger at someone else or to blame someone than to, and to try to run ahead of them than to realize that, yeah, you can go fast when you go along, go alone, but if you want to go far, you have to go together. And, uh, it's just human nature to get in these little pickles. And uh, if you're really driving things hard and you're really ambitious about the change you want to make in the world, there's going to be a lot of different ways to get there. But when you do have people that are kind of in that high drama and that crisis, they are, they are very smart and very capable people. And when you slow them down and remind them of that, they tend to find each other again pretty quickly. What are things that um, that you try to instill in your team? Like, what are things that you're looking for in your team? We 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 have a we've agreed to some core values, and so one of the core values is um, zero subordination. So nobody works for anyone else. We're all we might call somebody a manager and a president and a treasurer and a vice president. But that, that, those are fancy titles and they mean something, but they don't mean that you have more power over someone else or you can tell people what to do. They just mean that you have a role to play. And so we've said we are all equal with 24 hours a day. So we're going to work together and, and treat each other like the big adults we are. And then another one is radical transparency. There are no secrets. There are no black boxes. There are no hidden agendas that we, when, when we have a, a meeting, everyone's welcome to come. 
everyone's welcome to listen in. And if we have small meetings, they have to publish the notes and um, the, we try to keep things as open as possible. And then the other value is fierce inclusion, which is why we have the quacks because we've had a value that everybody that everybody matters. Everybody gets to spread their wings. Everybody is brought here to do their best. And when that starts falling apart, we're not living that value. So we get to give each other feedback and fix it. So we picked some of those values by talking about how we wanted to be as a team, because then when you're not being that way, it's a reason to say, we had an agreement. This is not good. Let's have a powwow. Um, so picking those values is pretty important because then you know when you're on track and off track pretty quickly. You use the word B. Can you, um, I know we're getting close to the end of time. So if you guys have any questions, please let us know as soon as possible. But can you explain the importance of being versus just doing? Um, yeah, not not everything. I think sometimes it's it's easy to think that you can get what you want with managing a lot of tasks and you can be really busy doing a lot of things and it can get quite exhausting doing, 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 doing all the time and trying to do all the right stuff all of the time and every, everything should be in action. And the, the quality that comes through things doesn't always require so much effort. Um, for example, like, you can try to um, make a difference for a sponsor. Let's just say that you want to have a sponsor in for your team and you have all these actions you're planning to take to um, go meet a hundred people trying to find a hundred sponsors. Um, that's going to be exhausting versus being thoughtful and being strategic and being open to pause and take the time to figure out how you want to be with a sponsor and to find the right sponsors or the right fit with your agenda so that as you approach them, the tone of the conversation is always looking for the win-win versus just completing a really long to-do list. So I think the difference between the power doers and the power being is being in touch with your energy. You know, why are you doing it? Who should you be doing it with? Where is the quality in what you're doing? And I think when people have a really good attitude and they're really positive and they're being really thoughtful about how they're being in every circle they're in, good things just tend to happen over and over and over again. It's like you draw things to you when you're being consistent with really positive values and co and being open and collaborative and inclusive. When that's your energy because you're being responsive and you're being open and you're being caring and you're being kind and you're being trusting and you're being trustworthy, you tend to attract other people and other opportunities around you that look a lot like that. Does that sound like what we want? Yeah. Yeah. So you still have to do things, but it's important to be those things before in all of the things you do. And you don't have to do, we don't have to do a million things we need to be. Uh, Kelly and I talked about before this about being focused on the things you're going to do and not having, like she said, don't have a list that's this long of impossible tasks to complete that bog you down and make it frustrating and not fun. Uh, but being really intent on those two or three things that we can accomplish and accomplish well um, and really show up as our best selves and bring all those things that we're being to the table in those three things until that's complete. And then you do three more things. Um, but I think- Yeah, maybe Cammy, if I could just add one more quality about that, about yeah. this might be one of the, life lessons I wished I had learned when I was 15 or 20 instead of 45 or 50. But um, there in, in the, in the world of energy and in the world of attracting things to yourself, it's really important that you're more likely to get what you want. 
if you put your energy on what you want and not on what you don't want. And so, so many times we'll be really focused on what we don't want and we tend to draw more and more of what we don't want to us versus if we can really think about what we do want and then really focus on putting our energy towards what we do want, we tend to get more of what we do want instead of experiencing the not having of it, we experiencing the desire for it and what it's going to be like to have it. And then good things follow all that positive energy where kind of more slogging through it tends to follow all the energy around feeling like you don't have what you want. So if you guys have goals, really get a get fall in love with the energy of what it's going to be like to have them and the, the fun of pursuing them and the joy of trying and the joy of learning. And if you can avoid the pitfall of getting really bogged down in how much it sucks to not have what you want yet, just you just don't want that energy following you around. So if you can kind of be in a way that is always in line with what you do want, you'll find that it comes a little easier than when you resist it. Might not make any sense, Cammy, but I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you can build on that. <laughs> well, I feel like it comes full circle back to you. You have to have a dream for a dream to come true. Like you right. Have, to have the end goal in mind um, and then fall in love with the process of achieving that. Yep. Who you get to be to achieve that. So. Nice. Very, very good. Do you guys have any questions? I have an off topic question. Okay. Where, where's your favorite place to live? Ooh. Uh, well, I got to be honest that I, I just moved back to Iowa and I'm really glad to be living at home again and closer to my family. That's really awesome. And probably my favorite place to visit or be in the world. I'm kind of a big fan of Australia. Interesting. What would you say was the one of the gateways, one thing that really stands out to you that has allowed you to excel in the ways that you have? Um, people who took chances on me. That I think that that um, I'm really grateful for the people like you, Cami, that are taking a chance on these guys. That the folks that give us opportunities to shine. It's our job to show up and shine in those opportunities. But when you have people who pick you out of a crowd and see you and and give you that chance to make a mark and then you execute on it, it tends to just lead to another thing and lead to another thing. My my whole life has kind of been that way. But I've had a just one lucky thing after another because people were willing to take a chance on me. And then I was willing to take a chance on myself, even when people were asked me to do something I'd never done before. I said, I'll try. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Uh, I might fail. Your life's not over. It's just a, it's just information. And then somebody taught me a while ago that no's are free. And it's probably one of my favorite phrases because if you have the courage to ask for stuff, the worst thing you're going to hear is no. And if you say, if you ask, you wouldn't believe how often people say yes, but it's scary to ask knowing you might hear no, but when you actually do it, it's so fun when you get pleasantly surprised over and over again, that it's your ideas are always worth considering. I love that. You guys have another question? How do you see rodeo kids from your point of view? Um, I think that rodeo kids is a really big opportunity for, um, folks, for people who are already kids in this really cool community to, um, to come together to share something they love and to, of course, compete and get better and, and, you know, help everybody learn and help everybody try something new but to also, on, on some ways, take the competitive part out of the sport so that it's a place where if you like the same things I like, we're always going to have a good time here. You're all, you know, you're always welcome. This is a very special community. We're glad to have you in it. And I recently watched, I'm, I'm not a big TV watcher, but I just watched this Netflix series on the PGA, all the golfers. 
And of course there's the very best golfers like Tiger Woods and some of these other people who are, they're just working out and practicing all the time and, and they're nutso about their sports and they're the best of the best and they're making a lot of money. But every single, every single um, tournament, all 120 golfers start the tournament. And after two days, only 60 people get to go into the weekend that is on TV and they paid to be there and they, you know, they get washed out. They have to go home. They, they leave and there's professional golfers and they only win once in a while. But there was one guy in the bunch who was really there for the love of the game. I mean, that he, he just, he didn't have to win every week. He loved the sport. He loved the other people there. He was glad to be doing that. He felt really fortunate to have the opportunity. And I have a kind of, I just had a soft spot in my heart for him because you can be, some of you guys might end up being the best of the best and that will be wonderful. But what about everybody else in your community every day? Shouldn't it be fun? just to be around? Shouldn't it be fun to be included? Shouldn't it be fun to be in the community? And shouldn't it be, wouldn't it be fun if nobody gets left behind and all that's important is that you're here and that you try and that, and that, you know, we all know that some days are great and some days are hard, but the most important thing is that we get to bring our love here and we get to express ourselves and we get to do something we love with people we love. And let's please find ways to invite more people to the party and to have a good time and to make friends for life. Wouldn't that be great if like the, the outcome of rodeokids.com is that more and more people get to join the great fun of something you guys love so much. And then they'll never forget for the rest of their lives that they got to touch your bubble or your community or your world, whether it was for a day or for a season or for a lifetime that they'll never forget that it was one of the best things that ever happened to them. Because well, they're, they're world champions. Champions. Very good. Anything else? Good question, Connor. Good answer, Kelly. I like that. <laughs> Thanks. I'm excited. I, I think it's super cool that you guys are like the first people who really get to shape it from your own your own experience and your own love and also but use what you don't like just as much as you use what you do like so that you can figure out what you want to create for everybody else yes well we really appreciate your time we're going to definitely be respectful of that we know you're a busy lady and have a fun evening planned i'm sure with your friend that's there um, yeah thanks so thank you for joining us and for all the insights. hold on one second you're welcome I will see you guys later. Have a great time at the farm. Thank you. Hey, sorry about that. No, we're still on. <laughs> mm-hmm.